now that I've explained what it's there to do, if you look at this rather busy slide, what this shows is the, the way the FTP mechanism works. You've got the ALM function at the top, just like we did in the earlier slide, and that quotes the FTP rate to the business lines. Now, this business line here is for the retail business lines, okay, the business line. So on the left-hand side, you've got the customer lending part of the business. So for example, here we've got a, a mortgage, a residential mortgage, and on the right-hand side, we've got the deposit-taking side of the business. For the loan, in this specific example, the bank is going to lend a residential mortgage to a retail customer. The mortgage is going to have a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to have a contractual maturity of 25 years. I've got their legal 25Y. So a contractual maturity of 25 years, but the expected life of the mortgage, where it's floating, right, is seven years. That's because based on past customer behavior, going observed over the last 10, 20 years or longer, on average, the variable rate mortgages repay after seven years. Of course, averages suffer from the, 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 the downside that they are averages. Some customers will pay off after 25 years, run it to full term, and some mortgages may pay off six months later because a customer has uh, bought the property as a, as, a speculation, as a speculative deal and sold it again, for example. <clears throat> so that gives us an average expected life of seven years for the floating rate. Of course, in this bank's, in this specific example, the bank also offers a fixed rate product, but not to match the legal contractual maturity. If you look below that, the, the solid arrow, the fixed rate interest rate, the bank is offering a residential mortgage for, with a contractual maturity of 25 years, but the fixed, it is fixed at an interest rate, a fixed interest rate for between one and five years, let's say five years. So in other words, after five years, the bank has a repricing option. The mortgage is either going to be repriced at another fixed rate for another term between one and five years. It's either going to move to the floating rate or the customer will go elsewhere. Uh, and so the, 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 the deal will, will, will close. So this gives us the term that the treasury desk should quote the FTP rate for. It's going to quote either a floating rate seven year because the expected life is seven year or it will quote a fixed rate FTP rate that matches the customer product either one to five years. So that's the way we've treated that. What this, this internal ticket, this internal transaction has done is to transfer the liquidity funding and interest rate from the business line to the treasury function. Exactly the same on the other side. The retail customer is either giving a floating rate deposit to the, to the, the bank, the business line, uh, either, for example, an instant access deposit, a call account, or a term deposit at a fixed rate. And again, the FTP ticket matches that but here the treasury or ALM function is paying that matched tenor FTP rate to the business line for those deposits. Now the matched tenor is what? A fixed rate fixed term deposit has an explicit maturity but of course a current account or a call account or an instant access deposit account they don't have a fixed contractual term to maturity so the bank will apply a expected life, a behavioral life for a part, a, a all or part of the balance of those deposits and it'll be that tenor that matches the FTP rate tenor. Now that's, so that's covered that off. We've got a, the, the ALM function is going to quote either a fixed or a floating rate to match the customer product interest rate. And then I've got at the top right hand corner what other add-ins there could be. You could have an add-in if I am using, if I am, if I am hedging interest rate risk of fixed rate product with the market externally with an interest rate swap, I might want to add on the bid offer spread price of the swap and also the collateral funding cost of the swap to match the expected life of the product and therefore the swap. Uh, that's going to need collateral because I'm using derivatives so there'll be a funding cost there for collateral and if it's a foreign exchange hedge for example the loan is in dollars but uh, Treasury has to borrow sterling to FX into dollars to lend to the, via the business line to the customer then of course there might be an FX hedge cost as well. Now the other add in there which I haven't got there because I've already addressed it was the liquid asset buffer add-in, okay? But that might not necessarily be an add-in, it might be quoted in the FTP curve anyway. So if it's quoted anyway in your FTP curve, it's one of those four components that I showed you earlier, then it's already in the FTP uh, rate. So that's how the FTP mechanism should work. And so we've got some calculations to make, we've got to estimate, we've got to construct the FTP curve to start with, 
We've got to estimate our term liquidity premium for tenors going from one year out to 20 years or longer. We've got to make some calculations to estimate behavioral life, expected life, where there isn't a fixed contractual term. And then, of course, we've got to match off with the customer product internally so that we transfer the liquidity funding and interest rate risk to the treasury function. So slide 24, I think, is a good summary of what the FTP process is about.